So let's take a look at let's take a look at uh, my io.h and just a reminder ourselves of um, the things that we need to have in a header file. So for your milestone to when you are submitting, I really like to see you having safeguards for your header file, which means you have that if if not defined SICT underline, it's contacts, right? Contacts underline H, underline, underline, and then define the same thing and an end define the at the end and everything in the middle. Yes. That's fine. Probably I'm going to let you know that's not the standard. This is what this is the thing that we we follow. The good thing is that <coughs> if I write a main pro program to check yours, then I don't want to get different uh, values for our contacts. So that's the standard. So the standard is always SICT underline name of the header file and two underlines at the end. You can always do it and resubmit, but it's fine. When I see several resubmission and you have one of them on time, the other ones, even if they are not on time, fine, well, they, they are considered on time, okay? As long as you, should, you could submit it, it means you're just making it better. <coughs> so let's go back and uh, talk about functions. So So I'm going to add a file over here again, prg.c. Um, when we are dealing with arrays, I mentioned this, and we're just going to point that out one more time to just kind of see what we are dealing with here. So when we are dealing with an array, essentially what we have is a piece of memory like this, right? So we have a piece of memory that starts from the beginning wherever it is and it keeps going. And then you have several uh, bytes and bits and all the stuff halfway through, correct? And all these things that you have are your memory. It starts from the beginning, whatever is just address zero, and it goes over here to address whatever you have, we don't care. <coughs> when you actually type something like this. So whenever you mention something like, <coughs> uh, let's do something like that. So whenever you mention something like int, say, a5, you're essentially asking for five integers, okay? Now what the OS, what the operating system, what the compiler and OS do together is that it is going to occupy five integers for you. Now, let's say, let's assume each cell that I wrote over there is actually five, four bytes. So let's assume each place, so some place in memory, mm, yeah, some place in memory, it's going to actually occupy a place for you for four thingy. We, we told you, and it's going to call this A, correct? That's what we said. But then I told you that's not reality, and that's not what happens actually. So this becomes a zero, this becomes a one, and then two, and then three, right? The, oh, ah, we had five, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> five <laughs> and four, so there we have five integers, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. Now, <laughs> that's not exactly what happens. So what happens is actually something like this. There is no A like that over there. What happens is this, somewhere else you have a pointer called A, and this pointer is of type integer pointer, okay? And that A actually points to the beginning of the array. So that's how compiler make, fixes it. And that's why the index of the array starts from zero, because you are actually telling to the compiler from address A goes zero integers further. Which one that will be? The first one, right? Then you say from address A go one integer further. Which one is going to be? Second one. Then you're going to say from address A go one integer further. And that's going to be the third one. So essentially, <coughs> and I want you to remember this, <coughs> <coughs> name of an array 
is essentially a pointer pointing to the beginning of the array. And the index that you put over there is compiler's magic to go that many integers further from the address of the beginning of the array. So if what I'm saying is right, you're OK with this, right? Can I uh, remove this beautiful piece of art? Yes. OK, we're OK, right? I know you're going to miss it, but OK, so. <laughs> All right, so essentially, <laughs> I'm going to write a program, right? So I'm going to have, uh, what do I write first? Define, what is that beautiful thing that we write? CR? T underscore secure. Secure, no warnings, right? And then we're going to go uh, include, actually, I'm, I'm going to say include what? My io.h because I want to just get something and probably I'm going to need, oh, and that's always, remember the custom ones are always the things that you have done yourself. Always you have to have the, uh, yeah, so always you have to have the library ones first and then the ones that you created next. So in here I'm going to have int main, right, and uh, we're going to go, uh, Oh, I have to fix something. Over here, it's four things. So this is not set yet. I'm going to go to uh, Tools, Options. Then I'm going to go to Text Editor, All Languages in my case, because I hate tabs. Insert spaces, make them smart. And uh, three is fine. Two is better, actually. Let me just add three. The heck with it. So three spaces for each tab. And I'm going to go OK. So what happens is that from now on, uh, when I create something, then it's going to give me th three as a tab. And it's going to be spaces, not tab. Why did it put tab or whether I don't know? I'll, I'll find out. Anyways, let me just check one more time. Tools, options, tabs, insert spaces, uh, smart, OK. This should work, but I don't know. Anyways, so I have three spaces over there, and that's my tab. Now I'm going to say over here, uh, integer A. I'm going to say integer A5, as I mentioned over there. And I'm going to set that one. And I'm going to set that one to, um, say, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, just to be able to refer to it properly so we know which one is what. And now, now, please take a look at this. So when I set from A, when you are on A and you go one further, A actually points to the beginning of the array. So if I create an integer pointer P and I set it to A, what's going to happen? What is, so what is P first? P is a, what is P? No, what is P? If I, somebody tell you what is P, you have to say P is an and yeah, it's a pointer, but what type of pointer? Read, read it in English. What do you read this? What do you call this? Integer what? Pointers. Pointers, thank you. So what is P? P is an integer pointer. Okay, very easy, Sam. I'm not going to trick you. I'm just asking for facts. So P is an integer pointer. And I t just told you that A is an integer pointer pointing to the beginning of the array, right? So if I take the address that I have inside A and put it in P, where P is going to point to? A, or the beginning of A? A zero. A zero, yeah. Correct? <coughs> <coughs> so if I actually say, pre oh, it opened. Mm -hmm. oh. <coughs> OK. Uh. All right. OK, so percent D, new line. And now I can say target of P. So if I print this, if what I said is right, this is supposed to be 10, right? And if I run it, you will see that that is, in fact, 10. <laughs> I forgot to say return. I'm going to do that. I got a warning over that probably, but anyways. So that's 10, as you see. Are we OK with that? All right, and we said why pointers are special, why they had to create a pointer at all. Why do we have, why, they, why didn't they, they didn't just say pointer P? They had to say integer pointer P. Why? Because P needs to know what is the size of the target, correct? 
Are we okay with that? So this is the million dollar question over here. Okay, I'm pushing the down R and it's thinking. Okay, all right, and this is lowercase b. So if I do this, then what's going to be the output of this program? Exact output of this program. First of all, immediately you say 10, new line, and then? 30 new line. Why? Because you're adding two sizes of integer to p. So it's going to go to the next one. Okay? So. Okay, so it's going to be 1030, right? I know, that's, that's, that's why it's a million dollar question. Now tell me what's going to be the output of this one. So now, just to show you what the difference is, and now after this we know what arrays are, we're going to just write, jump right into, uh, so I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this. Now, what is the exact output of the following program? That's going to be in your final examination. That's going to be questioning your final examination. Now, tell me, what is the output of the following program? And line. Now, you answered already. Shush, someone else. I don't want to teach to one person. He's going to tell us. So the first one is going to be, let's start from the P is pointing to what? To? 10. So that's 10 when it's printed, right? Yeah. Then I add two, two integers to P, which means P is now going to point to 30. 30, right? So it's going to print 30, right? Now I'm adding 2 to the target of P. So what's going to get printed? 12. <laughs> I'm dealing with math geniuses. Actually, I was listening, watching High Figures the other day. Have anybody seen it? High Figures? No? Oh, watch that movie. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, <laughs> it's all about math. Anyway, so, yeah, so, tar so when I say print target of P, what did it print? Mathematicians, 30. Now I'm saying add 2 to the target of P. Thank you. All right, so now if I actually run this, I'm going to have 32 this time, right? Are we okay with this? Okay, so let's to see is if exactly you found you, you understood how, how things are happening. Now what's gonna be the output? Please don't think about the first three because you already answered it. The fourth one is the one that you're gonna <coughs> the last line is going to be fifty. All right? Are we, are we all okay? Thank you. Now we know what pointers are. We know what arrays are. Okay? As a matter of fact, so this is pointer arithmetic. Why am I looking at that place? Get out of my face. Okay. Oh, you want to watch it? <laughs> you have your own personal screen? Seriously, you think that's better than that? Okay, sure. Okay, sure, sure. Watch it. Enjoy. Okay, so, so what do I want to say? Okay, so now let's do something else. Now, always listen to what I'm saying and get logical conclusions out of it. Okay? Didn't I say A is a pointer? Didn't I say that A is a pointer pointed to the beginning of the array? Right? I said that, right? Right? Didn't I? I did. So if I say printf percent D backslash N, print target of A, what's going to get printed? It's going to print 10, right? We know that, right? If I say this, I should have started with this actually. <laughs> if I said this, What does it mean? It's going to print what? 10. This one prints? Mathematical conclusion. Everything is the same other than these two, which means that is equal to this one. 
which means these two are the same. Right? And because of that fact, can't I say, can I, what is the f a third line right now? If I print this, what's going to get printed? 10 is going to get printed, right? Now, this is a million dollar question now. What is the third line? 30. 30. Potatoes, this is potatoes, this is potatoes. <laughs> All right? Pointers, arrays, same thing, no difference. Now, do you know what I just created over here? A snake with two heads. Okay, one is called A, the other one is called P. They are po both point to the same body. Are we okay with that? Are we okay? Any problems? Questions? Suggestions? Are we okay? Okay, now, again. <coughs> My friend is missing from here. Where is he? Charlie. Yeah. No, the, the guy who always sits over here. No. Uh, Drop the subject? No. All right, so. Zero two. Pointers and arrays. So now we know what pointers and arrays are, and now we can jump right into Function. functions and arrays. All right. So So now if I want to print all the contents of that thing, okay? All the contents of that array, if I want to do that, what information I need to pass to a function, okay? If I want to actually write something, first of all, I want to write I want to write a function that prints arrays. We've done this already, so you should know. I want to write a function that prints integers. So if I say PRN ints, if I call it like this, I don't need it to return anything to me because it's just printing arrays, right? And now I want to tell it what to print for me. What is the first argument that I have to pass to it? Pardon me? The integers. The integers. Yeah. You cannot pass the integers because it's an array. Yeah. So you have to pass the integers are called? What these integers, what, what do you call these integers? It's an, ah, yeah, that's a little too techy. I want kindergarten version of it. It's an array. So first we have to pass the array of integer, right? Pass the array. So that's what we can do. So we get, <coughs> and how did we say we pass an array to a function? We write the array type, <coughs> and we just put an empty bracket over there which means I am telling that I'm passing an array that doesn't have a body. Where the body is coming from? The main. Any place. That, you cannot pass five things all together. We know now that the name of the array actually points to the whole array. So if I just pass the name, I know where the, everything is, right? So if I want to do that, now the tricky part over here is that because C language is not aware of what is the size of an array, I am doomed to always find a way to tell to the function who's dealing with the array what the size of a function is. There is no way, f even in main, for you to find out what is the name of an array, which is, what, is the, what is the length of an array, which is a lie. There is a way, but we don't want to know. But that's, a, but that's a tricky thing. It's not within the language structure. It's a side effect of the language. <coughs> but in a... <coughs> A function, it's an absolute impossibility. Therefore, I have to either come up with some kind of a rule telling that all the values are positive. If you get to a negative one, then stop and add a negative number at the end, something like that. Or pass the size, one of these. So I want to print integers. So I'm going to pass the size in this case. OK, so I'm going to say int size, right? So that's going to be my function. And then I'm going to come over here, values, 
and then I'm going to take that for all those people who did in test one and did not. When I, I gave you this and I told you to write the function, and lots of people wrote only the body of the function. When I give you the prototype, you have to re repeat the prototype when you're writing a function. We said when a function returns something, create an instance and return it. We don't have anything being returned over here, so we are off the hook in that manner, right? Now, what I need to do, I want to print these things one by one. So what do I do? I'm going to say integer i. That is my counter. Then I'm going to say 4. i set to 0. i less than size. That's the value that is coming in. And i plus plus. And I'm going to print them one by one. So I'm going to say printf percent d. And I'm going to give it a space to separate it from others. I'm going to say values. And in here, I'm going to put i. And then at the end, when everything's nice and done, then I'm going to say put care, new line. Put care is printing a single character. Okay? So if you don't want to just write the whole printer thingy, you can just write put care and put a single character with it to print one character. All right? Now, if I want to actually print that thing, I can say what? I can say print int. And in here, I'm going to say array A. Of course, I don't need to put anything, I just put its name. And then <coughs> put the size over here that is 5, right? Correct? And then I'm going to print them. So I'm going to say control F5. It's going to go through the loop and print everything up. Voila, I have the 10, 20, 30, 40. Do I need to walk through it? No. Okay. I expected you to say yes, but hey, if you don't. Anyone? Anybody wants to walk through? No? All right, so that's that. So that's how we pass functions to an array. But there is something over here to catch. There is a problem in here. You know what's the problem? I left my bottle of water in a car. <coughs> <coughs> All right, I cannot clear my throat. Anyway, so what I wanted to say was there is a problem over here. If by mistake, now please, please listen to me carefully. This is an important moment. If by mistake over here, I do something to this value because I'm a crazy nuts person. For example, I do plus plus. Huh? I'm going to say print value and then add one to it. Why? Because I lost my mind. I'm crazy. I want to do something stupid. All right? If I do this, it's going to actually print this exact same values, right? But what happens if I want to print them again? So if I print them again, oops, the values are added by one. Wait a minute. Didn't we say that we, when we change something in an array, it, the values don't change, nothing happens? Yes, we did. But we just mentioned that the name of a function is actually a pointer which means you are not talk, dealing with two separate types of values in here. The values inside the print int functions are exactly the same ones in the main. They are both pointing to the same place. Therefore, if you, by mistake, change the value inside the function of an array, what's going to happen? You're changing the originals. So you have to always, always, always look at the logic Use your brain and think about the logic. Does my function need in any way to change the values of those array? What is the answer over here? Does it need to, to print them? The answer is no. If the answer is no, then you have to make sure you make yourself remember that. How? If your function is intended not to change the values of an array, you always put a const in front of it. Always, always, always. Therefore, now if I compile and try to run this beautiful program of mine, I get an error. And the error says, it's a constant object, you idiot. You're trying to change it. OK? So I'm going to remove that. And now my function is going to work like a jar. Now if I run it, well, I went to the wrong one, wrong one. I don't want to start the program. OK, Control F5, one more time. There you go. And now nothing has changed and life is beautiful. Are we OK with this? Let me stand beside it while you're taking a picture. OK. Are we good? Any questions down to here? <coughs> I don't think so. OK. 
He don't think so. What, how did you do that? OK. <laughs> All right, are we OK with this? Any problem? Question? Suggestion? All right. So <coughs> now, what is this thing doing here? Oh, there we go. Now, the next thing. So now we know how the uh, values of a function, uh, values of an array can be sent to a thing. So let's say I want to actually get values and put them right into uh, a function. So I want to have read ints. I want to have a function called read ints to actually read integers one by one, enter the values, and then put them in an array. If I want to do that, then what's going to happen? First, if I want to read integers, does my function need to return anything? He's looking at me. Yes or no? No, it doesn't. I don't want to return anything. The, the action of changing the stuff remotely is not returning. I'm not returning anything. I'm just changing stuff remotely. So unlike the other one, <coughs> read ints values does not need a constant. Not, not only does not need, it shouldn't be constant because it's supposed to change the target. And I'm going to have in size over here. So void read ints. Oh, too lazy to type. Let's collapse this one. So what read ints is supposed to do? It's supposed to get the vat things now one by one. So I'm going to have the exact same thing, integer i for i set to 0, i less than size and i plus plus uh, i'm kind of like like i have because i'm hopefully like that i would assume that the the person who asked me told me to prompt the user for the sequence of the numbers so they know okay but please never write over here please enter the integers don't do that because you don't know what these values are unless they ask you to do so if they didn't ask you don't do it okay so what are we doing here now i'm going to say over here uh, printf, and I'm going to put percent %d, and I'm going to put like that to have some kind of a, a prompt for it. So, so the integers are, uh, the, the values are entered. And in here, I'm going to say address of values i. So it's going to actually get the integer and put it in the values one by one and keep going to the next one. Oh, 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 oh. Bad person I am. I'm a very bad person. I'm not going to do that. Reuse your code, which means uh, values i is set to get int. I have my i o. Oh, I written a function that receives an integer. Why do I do scanf? Right? But if I wanted to do scanf, that was the thing. So instead of writing the sloppy code of, and this one is going to be i plus 1, of course, i plus 1. And now I have to write over here scanf percent %d. And in here, I write address of values i. But I will not do that because I have written a function that receives a, uh, an integer beautifully. And when it's done, all the values are received and put in the array. Are we OK with this? Now, <coughs> uh, brr, uh, do give me a second. Um, um, Copy, copy, close, new, alt F A, pointers and arrays, zero, three, const arrays, const array passing. OK, so that's that. Now I'm going to bring this up. Control A, Control V, and we are in business. OK, so now in here, I can actually have something like this. So I don't need to initialize this anymore. There is no initialization needed. And I'm going to say uh, printf, please enter the marks. OK? Please enter the marks. Now, I could, be, I could actually make this even better. I'm going to say percent %d slash percent %d 
and in here I'm going to say or percent D of of percent D and in here I'm going to put size so I'm going to actually mention one of five, two of five, three of five, so they know exactly which one is being entered. So I'm going to say, please enter the marks. And now I can say read ints. And I'm going to put over here A and five. So I'm passing the A as an address. And then I'm going to say print ints, uh, PRN ints. And in here I'm going to put A and five. I'm going to say the marks are, sorry, the touchpad, I have to disable it, my, it hits it and it jumps everywhere. So uh, printf, the marks are, and I go to new line and <coughs> print, it's going to be printed. So now if I run this beautiful program of mine, the difference is that instead of not having this, uh, instead of having this as a constant, I, has a, I have it as a regular value, and it's going to come in here and get them one by one, and therefore the values are going to change. So if I run this program, you will see that uh, it's going to say, please enter the marks. That's a bad thing. You were supposed to go to, uh, um, to new line, so I'm canceling it. As enter the marks, I'm going to go to new line, backslash n, control F5. Please enter the marks, one of five, and I'm going to enter the values, and these are the values entered. Are we okay? All right. But we know arrays, right? <coughs> we know arrays, don't we? We do. So why don't I give print int option, sorry, read it options to actually prompt the user? I can. What is a character string? What is a character string? Bad people. What is a character string? It's a pass. What is a character string? What is a character string? A character string. Character string? Don't remember. Character string, people. Character string. Why nobody answers? Let's try for heaven's sake. Character string is. I have three students only. Array of characters that? What is the special property? Yes. Why didn't you say that earlier? It's a null terminated array of characters. Array of characters? I can pass it to here, and I can close the door. Give me a second. Somebody's being extremely affectionate out there. So I want readings to prompt, right? So I'm just going to put the prompt over there. So I'm going to say, uh, where do I put the prompt? I'm going to put it at the end. So in here, I'm going to say character pointer prompt or character array prompt, right? So that's the prompt that's going to get printed, correct? Right? And I'm going to put this one up here. Am I changing the prompt inside the array? or I'm just printing it. Nobody knows what I'm doing, do you? I do not want to have a printf before read ints. I want read ints to have the message within and print it itself. So I, I want to do this. Instead of saying printf something like that, I want to take that out and put it here. I want to say read ints in A5 and print this before it. So I want to point the, push the array inside. Do I want to change this prompt inside? No, I don't want to change it. Because I don't want to change it, I'm going to make it a constant. So it's been a constant character prompt. OK, and I'm going to bring this and put it on a prototype so it doesn't get mixed with anything else. So read int. <coughs> That's the prompt. Now in here, before anything, I'm going to say printf. How do you print a string? Percent what? S, so percent S, and in here I'm going to print the prompt. Okay, so it works now the exact same way, but now it's more encapsulated. And if you don't want to have a prompt, you can just make that empty if you want to, something like that. Okay, are we okay with this? <coughs> <coughs> 
So, so if I just run this beautiful program, it works the exact same way. But the difference is that now read ints is going to print its own prompt. And that's it. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Sold. Okay. So that's that. All right. Any questions down to here? Suggestions? Objections? No? All right. So I'm going to pause. So let's say I have a structure. Let's call that a structure, a package. So I'm going to call, so I'm going to say struct, say package. And a package that you want to ship has width, height, and length, right? So, so I'm going to say, and I'm going to put it as double because, I don't know, I like it. Anyways, double, uh, so I'm going to have width, uh, double height, and double uh, length. So these are the three things that the package has, okay? Now, I want to write a function that reads a package. We already learned how to do it through returning a value. So we could write the function like this. We, uh, we know that. So we can actually write something like, uh, uh, what should we call it? Um, I can call this uh, struct package and I'm going to call it get package. And I don't pass it anything. And we said we write the function in this way. So we are going to actually say uh, uh, the function that I have get package. Because it's returning a package, I'm going to create one. So it's struct package. Let's call it P. Then I'm going to get the values one by one. So uh, why is it giving me an error? Identify S is undefined. Oh, that's one of the wonders of, okay, let me save it. All right, so, ah, just the boo-boo with. Anyways, so now I'm going to say return P. Thank you very much, sir, for closing the door. So I am getting a package and I'm returning a package. And now I want to actually put the values in there. So I'm going to say printf, please enter uh, package diameters. Okay, and I'm going to go to new line. Sorry. And I'm going to go to new line. And pause the recording. So now print package diameters, and then uh, I'm going to say printf. Shush, printf uh, with, now I'm going to say p dot uh, with is set to get double. We know that value, we know we have written it already. And I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, for the other values. So I'm going to have over here height. And I'm going to have the... What is it? Width, height, and then the other one is length. Okay, so I'm getting those values and I return it. And that seems to be okay. All right? And if I want to print it, if I want to print the package, inform pardon me? It says print f width and then all of them underneath say width, width, or. Oh, yeah, the bad, bad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this one is height, and this one is, that's one of the, Side effects of copying. You do one and you think you did it, but then it becomes a big bug. Anyways, now if I want to actually print this thing, so uh, I'm going to say struct, uh, I'm going to say void because I'm printing it, prn package, and I'm going to pass it a package, struct, package, uh, p. <coughs> And to print the package, uh, 
I'm going to say diameters. What am I talking about? Dimensions. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so printf uh, package dimensions and go to new line. And now in here, I'm going to say printf percent. Uh, let's say it's just one uh, 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 decimal is enough. And I'm going to say uh, x percent 0.1. LF, and again that one, and percent point one LF, and go to new line, and or I don't need to go to new line over here, just going to show it, and in here I'm going to say P dot height, P dot length, and P dot width. Okay, so I'm just printing in the dimensions. Life is beautiful and everything's worked. This is what we learned initially, uh, how to actually enter information. And if I run this program, it will work perfectly with some errors. Let's see what is the error. Uh, syntax error where? Uh, printf percent, percent, percent. stupid compiler. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's one of those things. There you go. And it didn't work at all because I did not do anything in main. I just wrote that. Thank you very much. Nothing in main is done. So, <laughs> so I'm going to write struct. Ah, definitely I'm sick, man. All right. So <coughs> package my package and then I'm gonna say my package is is set to uh, oh I want to say printf oh actually my package is set to get package did I have get package yet? get package okay and then I'm gonna say uh, print um, uh, PRN package and I'm going to pass the package that I just got into it. So simple and straightforward. This is a review of what we have done before. So with 10.2 height, 45.6, and the other one, I don't know, 34.5. And those are the dimensions, and, the, and it's printed. Are we OK down to here? Now, that's what you should never do. This is what we, what we learned how to do this. It looks very OK, and it looks very modularized, and everything's beautiful. But as I mentioned, it is extremely expensive. Look at this. Get package, first of all. It's creating a structure, does it, and then returns it out. And you don't know. This return thing is one of the most expensive things in computer science. Um, remember that, just to tell you, why is it difficult to return something? Let me tell you. You know that any variable that you define inside a function get destroyed at the, at the end of the function, right? Just imagine how many hoops it has to jump to be able to return the value of the p that is just being destroyed out to another function. It has to make a temporary package, nameless put the p in it because p is just about to die. And then when this function is over, get that temporary name thingy, put it in my pack, and after it's done, destroy that. So it's lots of things happening, very expensive. <coughs> and the other one, I created the package over here. So essentially, I'm doing the same thing to be able to print it. I'm creating a temporary package, put this stuff in it, pass it to my function, in that function, print it, and then destroy it. So I'm doing lots of data assignment and creation. Now I only had three doubles over there. What if I had a student transcript with whew, how many things in it? Thousands and thousands of bytes of data. You know how expensive that would be, how slow my program will be? How do we fix this? <laughs> so 
So this is 0, 5, bad funks and structs. So this is bad functions and structs. We don't want to do that. Now, first, didn't we just learn about pointers? We just learned about pointers and we said pointers, no matter what the size of the target is, they're all four bytes, right? And we mentioned, I said, an envelope that you write an address on, you can never know if it goes to a government building or a small house. The size of the target has nothing to do with the size of the address. Address is always the same, right? Now, <coughs> why don't I, instead of creating a package and returning it, get the address of the package and remotely put the stuff there? Isn't that easier? It's just four bytes, right? So instead of actually returning a package, my get package will work like this. So the logic will not change. The only difference is that this is going to be void. And in here, it's going to be struct package pointer PTR. OK? So instead of that, it's so. So now what I need to do to do the exact same logic using a pointer. So I have a pointer over there that points to a structure. Because it's pointing to a structure, I have the structure in hand. I have its address. I don't need to create one. So I'll just remove that. So there is no need to create a temporary thing, and there is no need to return anything, because I already have it out there. Now in here, I have to say PTR that the pass. So to be able to access to PTR, I have to say target of PTR, correct? So I'm going to come over here, and in here I'm going to say target of PTR. There is a problem with this and C syntax. That is, dot is much more stronger than asterisk. If you have dot and asterisk competing on a variable, dot happens first. So this will not work. You have to put parentheses around it. OK, so what you need to do in here is to put something like this. So you say target of PTRs. Remember, I told you that a dot means apostrophe S. So target of PTRs with. OK, or you can say going over here, target of PTRs. Height. But C programmers are lazy. They want to do things quickly. They said, OK, parentheses, asterisks, this has too many things to do. Let me give you an operator that makes it easier, which means if you have a pointer, instead of saying target have PTR, you can actually do this, PTR that points to length. So potatoes, potatoes. So you can have two characters printed instead of one, two, three, four. That's faster. So you are saying the pointer PTR that points to the length, put it in there. It's kind of an arrow. It makes sense. So those are the same. So, so because this is a good one, I'm just going to leave the first one as is for us to see what is the difference. Then I'm going to do, the, do it for, for the rest. Now, what is the advantage of this? The advantage is that no new package is created. No assignment is done. No data is passed. I am just printing that thing right from where it is. But again, remember that. Oh, sorry, I'm just setting the values inside. I have to fix that my pack thingy. I am not printing. I am setting the value, uh, values of the package remotely. So to actually write, uh, write this thing, I have to do it exactly as I did before. So in here, I have to say address of my pack. So I'm passing the address of my pack to get package, and get package will remotely set its values to whatever it's supposed to be. That's a beautiful thing. Now, how can I fix? How can I fix the print package? Print package is receiving the whole package, right? Why do I do that? Why don't they just pass the address? 
why do I have to pass the whole structure to the print? I know how to make it read-only, so by mistake they can't change it, right? So what I will do over here, I'm going to say, okay, this is not a, a, a structure, but a pointer to a structure, and I'm going to fix that one too, a pointer to a structure, and then it simply becomes p that points to height, p that points to length, and p that points to width. Okay, now what happened? Instead of passing three doubles, that it's essentially 24 bytes, I am only passing one address that is four bytes and remotely accessing. But again, you know, always remember, your worst enemy is you. Three days after you wrote a code, okay? Remember, you have to always enforce yourself. Print package has nothing to do with changing the package, right? Remind yourself that it's not supposed to change, which means you have to make it a const. And then you pass the address again. And now we have a beautiful structure manipulation with function, with minimal amount of data passed and perfect modularity. Why? Because the sprint package is only passing a constant pointer, which means the target cannot be changed, and only four bytes of data is passed, and the same thing for the get package. The, the results, however, is no difference. Like when I actually run this program, it's going to work the exact same thing, and we have no, see, exactly the same thing. I don't want to run it. It's just going to work the same way. Okay? <coughs> Are we okay? It doesn't want to let go. Ugh. Get down. All right. And I don't need this. And I don't need this either. Uh, remember, close all these things. But those things make everything slower. You don't want that. I have the least amount of windows open. All right. Any questions about pointers and uh, functions and structures? Okay, now printing and reading. So, <coughs> so this one is going to be 6 and good funks and structs using pointers. <laughs> Very short and descriptive name. <laughs> All right? So that's what we know. <coughs> and now, scanf. Uh, we don't need that. All right. <coughs> the four, first most important thing about scanf, something that lots of people never use ever, but it's very useful actually if you know how to use it. We know scanf receives values and puts it in our variables using the addresses of our variable. We've done that before. We know we put ampersand at the beginning of the, the variable and it works, right? It puts it in there. But we never ask ourselves, does the scanf return anything? The answer is yes, it does. It actually returns something. What does it return? It returns an integer. Take a look at this. If I say integer r, and I'm going to say r is set to scanf, and I'm going to put some values in here, integer uh, a double b, Character C. Okay, now I'm going to say percent D and uh, percent LF and percent C. And in here I'm going to put address of A, address of B, and address of C. Okay, now I'm going to say printf percent D and R. <laughs> I don't care about those values. 
I just want to see what R is going to be. All right? Now, if I run this beautiful program of mine, okay, and I enter, actually, let's do this too. I'm going to put A as uh, 100. I'm going to put P as 100.123. And I'm going to put C, bless you as, <laughs> bless you as X, okay? Uh, X. And now in here, I'm going to say printf. I'm going to go to new line. So I'm going to say scanf return. Scanf returned these values and printf. I have A as percent D and I have B as percent LF and I have C as percent C and I'm going to go to new line. Put an asterisk after and an asterisk before or something like this after. Uh, before and something. I just want to see exactly what do I have. So I want to see how things work. Okay, so let's run it right over here. I want to see what scanf returns. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is this. I don't know why I got those, those uh, error messages, but yeah. So scanf is waiting for the information to come in. Okay, so I'm going to put 10, 10.23 and Uh, a. So what's the output of this program? What is the output of this program? Forget about that, that line. Forget about this R. This one. A is going to print. Oh, it's going to print all garbage because I didn't put anything in here. The output of this program is pure garbage. Okay. A, B, and C. I think that's going to work better now. So I'm going to say printf, please enter int double, uh, int double care. All right, so now it's just to see what's going on. Control F5, that's more descriptive. All right. So again, 10. 20.123 and space and I'm going to put over here capital A. If I hit enter, what's going to be the output? Now let me tell you what scanf is going to return. Scanf returns the number of successful reads. How many things scanf is reading now? Three. So if it returns three, it means three things were received successfully and put inside the addresses that you passed through it. Okay, if it returns two, it means the first and the second was successful, but the third one was missed. If it returns one, it means the first one only was read, the rest failed. If it returns zero, it means none of them were successful and they were all garbage. I could not, I failed reading the first one, therefore the next I couldn't go through, right? And if it returns EOF, that is minus one, it means I am at the end of the file, which is not your case. You don't know even what is a file, so forget about that. In your case, that's not going to be, uh, be our case. So if I now hit enter, so now we know it's going to return three. There is no question about that. But what are the values that are printed? The first one is? Second one? Third one? Capital A. Absolutely wrong. Isn't space a character? Yeah. Yeah, because, because I put over here space A, and because I had character over here, it's going to read the space. It's never going to get to A. A is going to be in a, we have to flush it. <laughs> Got it? Sure. Capish? Yeah. Right? Good? All right. So that's that. All right. I'm just trying to tell you how precise you have to. I don't expect things, okay? Now if I do control F5, and now if I do this, then see what happens. So 10, 
20 point whatever, and A. Now I have A. Which tells us something new about SCADF. Attention! Something new about SCADF. Whatever you put over here, SCADF expects it to be and passes it, ignores it. Okay? Let's say I wanted the data entry to be comma separated. What could I do? I wanted to scan F to expect commas between the stuff. What I could do is this. Look at this. Comma and comma. You see that? Now if I do the data entry, I'm going to say control F5 and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say 10. 20.345 and A, and I hit enter. Scanf returned one. You see that? The first one value is correct, 10, but the rest remain exactly what it were before. They never changed because Scanf will not put anything on them. The read wasn't successful. So what happened was this Scanf reads 10. 10 goes in A. Scanf wants a comma. There is no comma in the data entry, right? Scanf stops right there and exits. And because it read 1, it returns that 1. R goes over here. Then it starts printing. Prints A. It's overwritten by that 10, so you're going to see 10. Then it prints B. The initial value that you had in there is untouched. It will not overwrite it because it, it couldn't read it. So that remains 100, 1, 2, 3, and the other one remains x. Are we OK with this? All right, now if I actually enter this like that, <coughs> now if I actually um, enter it properly, and actually let me do something. Scan F, return this, and go to new line. <laughs> Backslash in to just make it more nice. Now if I actually enter this, 10, 123.34, whatever, and then over here I'm going to put the Z and I'm going to hit enter. Now everything is perfectly red because scanf just comes over here, gets to the comma, passes the comma, and it keeps going like that. Are we okay with this? Now we know what scanf returns. Now, control F5. Now if I say 10, comma, and A, what's going to get printed? What's going to come out? Essentially nothing. Scanf returns zero, and everything becomes the same. It remains the same. Because when it wants to read the first integer, there is no integer to read. It's the character T. Therefore, it's going to fail. And it's going to return zero. Are we OK? Number two. <coughs> oh, zero, uh, zero, seven, scanf. Let's see. Scanf can read strings. Scanf can read strings. What does it mean? You can actually have, what is a string? What is a string? Null array of characters. Thank you. Null terminated <laughs> array of characters. So it means what it's going to do, it's going to actually get uh, values and null terminate it properly. So I'm going to say uh, character name, and I'm going to put over there 41. So you can say uh, printf. Please enter your name. And I'm going to say uh, scanf percent %s name. And then I can say printf hello percent %s how are you? OK? And go to new line. So what happens is that Again, please 
remember what I told you before and draw conclusions out of it. We don't put ampersand for a string. Why don't we put an ampersand in front of it? Because name is already an address. It's the name of the array. We don't need to put anything for it. No ampersand is needed over there. So now, if I actually run this beautiful program of mine, Oh, thank you. Good thing I didn't, I didn't compile it properly. Name. Thank you. OK, let me bring this down. It's bothering me. It's getting, oh, shoot. Anyways, so your name, now in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Fred Soleil. And what is it going to print? It's going to print, hello, Fred, no Soleil. Because space is a delimiter in data entry. So it's going to stop right there. And the rest of the stuff is going to stay in the keyboard, which means you have to wash it up. Wash. You have to flush it up. OK? All right? And by the way, that flush thingy that we had over here, we can make it better. Remember that we had scanf over here? There is a function called get char. Get char gets a single character. So instead of scanf, it's better to actually write get char. OK? Get care is like percent of, per, scan of percent C. It receives one character. It's good for your health. Let's do it that way. OK? So I'm just going to change that. Just remember, get care is the same thing as scan of percent C with one character. All right? <coughs> All right. So if I do this kind of so um, how do I fix that? Uh, uh, one more thing I have to mention. Um, you can always limit scatter of how many things to get. For example, let's say I want to have a name, and I want name to be only 10 characters. OK? So if I say Control F5, and I, if I say over here, let me see if I can catch this. Thank you. Get down. All right, and come over here. Thank you. All right. So let's go back here and like that. All right. So if I say enter your name and I put over here Soleiman Lu, is that more than five, 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's exactly 10, son of a. Is it more than 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's actually 11. Good. It's 11. OK? So if I actually run this program and if I if I enter this program, this is, this is what's going to happen. It crashed. This is one of the most common way that you can crash a program. How? I had over here 11, correct? I told to scanf to read Soli Manlu over there. Soli Manlu is 11 too. What is a string? Array of characters. Null terminated array of characters. He hates me. I know that for a fact. OK, null terminated array of characters. So if I want to put this thing in an array of character and null terminated, what happens? That's what scanf does, right? Scanf receives 11 characters. And I mentioned it is impossible for an array to know what is the length of an array. So it's got to put Soleimanlo on those 11 and then adds a null after in someone else's memory because my uh, array is not long enough. OK? Therefore, the program crashes. That's the most common thing. You can, you can fix that problem by saying, I want only 10 characters and no more for a scanf, for a, for, because it makes sense for a string. For, Integers, you can't do that. You can't do percent four D for an integer to have four things. You can't do that. But for a string, you can. OK? So that's what happens. So essentially, if I run the program right now again, if I write over here Soleiman Lu, now it won't crash. And it's going to have only one O at the end because it stops at 10 and then puts a null at the end. So it's, this is perfectly in a perfect good size over there. Are we OK with this? All right. 
So that's another thing that SCANF can do. But how can we tell to SCANF, hey, I don't, I want, <coughs> so I'm going to say up to 10 characters. Up to 10 char strings, uh, which needs 11 char array. Okay? Are we okay with this? <coughs> Save Alt F A, and this one's going to be uh, 07 scan F string dot C. All right? Now, how do we how do we make scanf? How do we make scanf accept accept uh, uh, spaces and don't stop at it? You can do that, but that's a little geeky. Now I'm going to tell you how it is. Let's say I have 41 characters here, and I want to get the person's full name, right? So I don't I want I don't want it to stop at space. I want it to stop as a specific delimiter. So when you, somebody enters a name, how do they end it? Enter. Enter, right? So you have to tell to scanf, I want you to read a string, but stop at backslash n. So keep reading and stop at backslash n. So what you do, you're going to do this. You're going to say, read everything uh, except backslash n. OK? For those people who don't know what's inside that thing, it's called the regular expression. You're going to learn later on in Linux and love it. But for now, just know that. So when you put two square brackets, you're essentially telling to to scan if, to use a regular expression. What is the regular expression? Read everything, but not backslash n. So essentially, it's going to keep reading, and as soon as it reaches to a backslash n, it stops. And then I'm going to say, and also not more than 40 characters. So I'm going to put 40 in here. So which means this is safe. First of all, it won't be able, it won't go over the size of my uh, array. Secondly, it will stop at backslash n which means now I can have my ginormous name over there entered with no problem. So I can actually go control F5 now, and I can say over here, fardad soliman lu, and enter, and everything's going to be received properly and stops right after. Are we okay with this? All right. All right, save, actually cancel, Alt F A. Uh, so that's going to be a 0, 8 scanf string. So that's the next scanf n string. We'll save that. Uh, please go read uh, um, uh, the input and output and library functions. Uh, later on, come uh, t uh, tomorrow and ask questions if I missed anything. Um, uh, we mentioned that we have a put character. You know that. I don't need to mention it. Put character prints one character. So... So, yeah. So, what does this print? Not print of uh, put care. What's going to happen now if I run this program? That's what's going to happen. Backslash A was alarm, remember? For all those people who put strange stuff that I have no idea what they, yeah. 
It's an alarm. It just does ding. Okay, so that's what it does. It default ding of your computer is going to happen when you put backslash a. Oh, backslash a means they're on. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it works. Um, let me pause this. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's got to go home first thing. I'm going to write the for loop. 9,000 with a backslash A, see what happens. Nothing, 9,000 things are going to happen. All right, so next thing, formatted output. For formatted output, the best thing I can do is to actually copy and paste what we have in our notes. So this is what I'm going to do. All right, so... When you put percent %d, it prints the actual integer. You know that, OK? When you put press percent %10d, it prints that one. Let's actually go step by step and, and look at it. That's a better thing to do. Uh, step by step. What the devil is that? OK, something came. What is this? Did I? OK, I think. 